Sorry for any background noise, I'm right next to my air conditioning unit here in the garage. Um, but a while ago on my main, my first channel, I talked about hooking up a Raspberry Pi to get notifications on my phone uh, when my doorbell is pressed. Kind of an expensive project with a Raspberry Pi. But here, I have a project I'm working on. Right now it's, it's in its first stages, but there's a lot of things I'm going to be doing with this. Instead of using a Raspberry Pi, I'm using an ESP8266 board here. Some of the benefits of the ESP8266 is the price. Uh, I got this one for $8, but I could have gotten it for $4 if I ordered from uh, China, which I have ordered some. This one's a full development board, uh, and it has built-in Wi-Fi, so price is low, already uh, does everything I need, so no need for the Raspberry Pi. Right now, I have two wires hooked up to my doorbell. Now, things that I'm going to be changing on this is uh, hooking up the button different. Right now, I'm just shorting out the connection, and that works. When I press the doorbell, I get notifications on my phone from this, but also once or twice a day, and I've had this hooked up for about a week, I get a false reading. Hooking up a resistor and hooking up the button a little different should alleviate that. Also, if you remember my original video, this is the transformer that rang my original doorbell, and that's what's wrong with my system right now, is that it's dead. Now, right now I'm powering this uh, 8266 off of just a regular cell phone charger here into a wall outlet, but this is powered by regular power, so I'm actually going to eventually switch this out and add two more plugs here. I might even get one with a built-in USB plug so that I don't have to use this charger. I can just use straight USB. Um, now, I may also change this out to a non-development board and just use a, a, a little bit cheaper uh, ESP2 8266 board. Uh, but I may or may not, depending on how I decide to power this. And right now, this is just controlling my doorbell, but eventually I might use it with a little radio transmitter to control the lights in my house because I have another one of these doing that. And if I can double up, save myself three bucks, I will. Now, today we're going to be looking at the buttons. I thought the button I have is falling apart. Instead of buying a doorbell, it'd be much cooler to have an arcade button at my front door. And I was hoping to use this one here. Uh, rather than this one here, because this one has LEDs in it and lights up. Unfortunately, it only lights up when it's pressed. I was hoping to have it lit up so people could see it at night and find it. Since that won't be the case, I'll go with the cheaper one that doesn't light up. So that's what we're going to be playing with today. Now, arcade buttons, again, come in different styles and sizes and have different types of connections on them. So the one with the LED you can see has four pins here, two for the button press and one to power the LED when it's pressed. And they're nice, easy to connect to here. This cheaper one here that doesn't light up just has two pads that we can solder to. So first I want to make sure the button works before I go through the trouble of soldering it all. Also, I'm not going to solder it directly to the wiring in the wall. I'm going to solder on little connection wires so in case I need to remove it, I don't have to you know, unsolder it every time I want to make a change. So right here I have my multimeter hooked up. Now I have it set on setting to check uh, the current and it's supposed to let out a high pitch audible tone but for some reason when I turned it on today uh, the speaker on it's kind of messed up so this is what it sounds like now just kind of crackly and staticky but I can tell that the connection is complete when I touch these two together so just to make sure this button is working I'm going to do my best to hold onto both of these pads here and then I press the button that didn't work. Let's make sure I have this. It's very hard to hold these together here. There we go. So the button does work. So now let's solder some wires on there. Here I have some jumper wires that uh, are usually used for a breadboard and projects that I've already snipped off the other end for another project, which is great. So I'm going to solder these to the button and then I'm going to solder uh, female connections onto the other end so I can easily unplug this and plug it in when I need it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm a horrible, I'm horrible at soldering, so don't judge me. Okay, so those soldered on there. Let's check the connections. I put some alligator clips on my um, multimeter here. Go ahead and hook these up and press the button. 
I hear the tone, I see the numbers, I have a complete circuit. My solder may not be the best in the world, but it works. Okay, so I think so far the hardest part... Welcome to Florida in the summer. <laughs> so far I think the hardest part of this project is deciding how I'm going to mount this to the current um, doorbell place. So right now at my house is uh, you know concrete on the outside. So do I make some sort of permanent attachment? Do I use the current holes? I was thinking about maybe making some sort of box with a hinge because I definitely want to be able to take this off when I need to if I need to work on it or make changes. I think at this point, just taking a simple piece of wood like this, and I think making it three times the thickness, so cutting three pieces the same size, uh, should be enough to fit the doorbell there. And then I can drill holes and uh, use the current holes in my house and screws to mount it on there. And then just one or two screws, I can take it on and off and disconnect it with the quick connects that we just soldered on here. So that is what I'm going to be doing right now, and hopefully it works. So right now I'm looking at it and it looks like uh, about an inch drill should work well. Um, the only thing I need to think about, that'll be fine fitting the button here. I might have to do one back part a little bit wider because it's this black screw piece here that will tighten this into place. So I might need a little plate, bit of space for that. So I might need to make the back piece of wood a little wider, but I'm going to go ahead and start off with that one inch drill bit. Go, put the wires through there, and it fits nicely in there. But yes, uh, to fit this little cap on here, I'm going to have to make the back part a little bit wider because I want to be able to lock that down. I could just, you know, hot glue this in there, which I might end up doing, but it'd be nice to be able to take this out with ease if I need to. But then again, I'm going to be able to take the, the whole thing off with screws. So we'll see what I end up doing here in a minute. So at this point, I need to connect these three pieces of wood. I just have them clamped together now. Now obviously I, I could use some wood glue and clamp them and, and wait a whole day, 24 hours for it to dry. I could probably use some sort of screws or nail some things in there, but I've got a brad nailer. So that's what I'm going to end up using. Now you might be asking, Chris, where did you get all the, the money for all these tools? <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, really, I have never really been a big tool guy, but uh, two years ago or three years ago my grandfather passed away and about a year ago my grandmother gave me all his tools. So I've picked up woodworking in the last year and, uh, and I'm loving it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. I've got different size nails. Uh, these one inch nails seem to be an exact fit. So that will be perfect. So I'll be using these one inch nails for this. And I got the compressor here going, so let's go ahead and do some nailing. So there we go, a couple hundred dollars worth of tools, and we were able to put four nails into three pieces of wood that easy. And again, you don't need all these tools to do this. Again, this part is actually the hardest part of all this. The electronics part is easy. Uh, but just using scrap wood, uh, you could have used a, a little pocket knife you know, if you needed to, to cut through this wood and some wood glue and, I, and then I guess the hardest part would be a drill bit which you can get, you know, a handheld drill for what, 30 bucks? You probably have one in your house. You may not. I don't know who you are. So that's it. We're going to sand this down and I'll check it out and I'm going to probably end up uh, sanding, the, uh, sanding this and then staining it real nice. <laughs> To make sure my new holes line up with the holes on the wall, I'm just going to take my old doorbell here and go ahead and drill some holes. There we go. Now I know where to drill my holes at. So, I didn't feel like running an extension cord out of here, so I didn't solder uh, these female connections on here. I just twisted the wires together and taped them up. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hook up my button now just for testing. Go ahead and press that. Now, I have this set up now. It sends a text to my cell phone, which can take up to 10 seconds. Uh, but the final goal will be that it rings 
there, I just got the text. So it's working. It tells me the time uh, and date that the doorbell was pressed, and I do have a camera up here that I'll eventually be grabbing images from and sending that along as well. I also plan on having it, uh, that's a slight delay, the cell phone's for when we're not home, uh, but have you, when you press the button, it immediately makes both my computer and my wife's computer ring or do something, uh, which should be pretty simple. So this works. Now, I also want to mention, uh, originally I was talking about using a arcade button that uh, has LEDs in it, which requires extra wiring. I don't know about your doorbell, but mine, there's only two wires being used, but there's at least six, seven, seven or eight wires in here that I could utilize for different things. So I could send the voltage through there to turn on the LED if need be. So there's that. Uh, I, again, lined up the two holes uh, with the old doorbell frame, uh, but my screws went in crooked, so really I'm, I'm going to screw it in with one screw, which is fine. The old doorbell was only on there with one screw anyway. Uh, I also only had really long screws, and I had a couple of screws that were one inch long, which is how thick our wood is, so I ended up recessing the hole a little bit on our wood frame just by taking a slightly bigger drill bit and wiggling around there. Uh, I stained it. It's drying now. Uh, I'm going to go grab it and we'll see how it looks here. First things first, the old drywall anchor uh, that was in there was uh, falling apart, so I'm going to try to oh, put this one in here. Hammer, hammer, hammer tight. There we go. I usually end up crushing those things because they hammer too hard. Okay, now, let's see. I actually do not expect this to fit flush up against here. It might, but I'm only using one screw. I might try to drill another hole, so I'm going to disconnect our little pigtails here. There we go, and that's exactly why I decided to do it that way. Here we go. I'll run these wires through here, and hopefully I'll have enough room in here to tuck these wires back in the wall a little bit. Like this. And then I will get my drill gun here and flip the screen on the camera so make sure I'm in shot here. There we go. If you hear somebody saying Dada, that's my daughter right by the door calling me. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start this screw into the wood here until it's poking out the other side. There we go. Then line it up. There we go, look at that. Now, let's hope that I left enough room for the button and the wire both. Didn't really think that part through. Now, I guess I could always gut out part of the back piece of wood to make room for the wires, but let's see. If I can, this is a lot of wires here. I don't think this is all gonna fit. Well, it will eventually look like that without the wire sticking out. So I need to make some space back here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to cut a notch out of the bottom back piece of wood here. So this is the point where I either screw up what I've been working on completely and have to start all over again and or cut off a finger. So this video might go viral. So you, you guys are some of the first to see it. So here we go. So there we go, um, not the prettiest, but that's going to be back against the wall, uh, so hopefully it won't be too noticeable. Uh, let's have a quick look and go see if that works. So you see the problem is I originally, in my mind, pictured there'd be more of a hole here on the wall that I could tuck the wires back into. Uh, but since that's not the case, I have a little bit of a notch here, let's go ahead and put this here, see all this here, let's go ahead and 
hook these wires together real quick. So I've tucked all those wires back in that little notch there. So now I definitely can't use that bottom screw, which I wasn't, oh, I just pressed the doorbell, so I should be getting a text here in a moment. And uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, this is Captain America. Okay. This is my daughter, Ember. She came out here to see the final product. Uh, so things I can do, and again, this is a work in progress, and I still have stuff to do with the electronics to touch it up some, but uh, yep, she, I, I could shorten the wires in there, that would make things a little bit easier, but they're tucked away now. I um, <laughs> screwed it in too tight. I, I pressed it. You again. pressed it. I screwed it in too tight and cracked the wood a little bit, so I might have to glue it, but it's holding for right now. And I've decided, see, hear my phone? That was because you pressed that button. Uh, and I'm just going to hot glue the button into the wood. So the wood can still come off and I can still disconnect it. Yes, okay. there it goes again. Uh, uh, no, that's it, because Mom's getting those texts too. So I just want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. There's also a link in the description to patreon.com forward slash millx1000. If you like my videos and you want to help support them, you can donate money there and become a supporter or a patron. Uh, if you can't, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. That helps me out a lot. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Say goodbye. Bye. Say, have a great day. Have a great day. So again, this is a video that is just part of a larger project. I'm going to have many videos on this topic as well as similar topics. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of those. Check out the playlists on my channel to make sure you see all the videos on this topic. And as we already stated, I hope that you have a great day.